I'm Harvey Galubach. I'm president and chief operating officer of American Refining Group. Um, behind me is the Bradford, Pennsylvania refinery, owned and operated by American Refining Group since 1997. The refinery is the oldest continuously operating refinery in the United States and is the oldest in the world still processing crude oil. We refine only 100 percent Pennsylvania crude oil and are the only refinery dedicated to processing uh, that very fine grade of, uh, of crude. Yeah, on, uh, on my left here, on your left, uh, is, is one of the older buildings in the refinery. It's called the Barrel House. Uh, we'll visit this a little later, but uh, this is where all of our uh, uh, finished lubricants are blended. And uh, they've got uh, quite a facility in here. Uh, we'll, we'll see that a little later. Uh, all of the products that are blended here either are shipped out in trucks, as you can see, or they're sent by pipeline down to our packaging plant uh, for uh, final packaging. Continuing down the, uh, the main road through the refinery, the first unit, processing unit that we come to, we call the uh, crude unit. And uh, that has a uh, capacity, rated capacity of 10,000 barrels a day. It was built in 1985. Um, it is atmospheric distillation that uh, fractionates the crude oil into eight liquid streams. If you think of fractionation as a process uh, similar to having your tea kettle on the, on the stove uh, where you're boiling the water and you're changing it from a liquid to a vapor and making steam, essentially a crude tower is doing that with crude oil. Uh, it is uh, raising the temperature of the crude and allowing the lighter fractions to, uh, to boil off uh, at different temperatures. The bottom of the tower operates at around 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the top of the tower is closer to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And that temperature differential allows us to separate the various components of the crude oil to make the products that, uh, that we need. Uh, coming off the crude tower, uh, we do have a, a gas stream, but we also have uh, naphthas that are naphtha solvents and naphthas that uh, will be ultimately converted to gasoline. Uh, we have distillate solvents, and then we have our uh, lube fractions, uh, a light, medium, heavy fraction, and the heaviest part of the, um, uh, the crude uh, is uh, called um, uh, cylinder stock. Unlike most other refiners, we only run an atmospheric column because this, the crude that we run, the Pennsylvania grade crude oil, uh, has no asphaltines. And so we make no asphalts. The, uh, the heaviest uh, product coming off the crude tower is a cylinder stock, uh, which um, is very dark in color and high in viscosity, uh, meaning that it flows very slowly and is a very heavy material and has uh, special uh, applications and we'll talk about those uh, a little later. Here we have a closer look at the, uh, the crude tower. Uh, the tower is 11 and a half feet in diameter and 135 feet tall. It has uh, 58 trays inside that help with the distillation process. Uh, there are a total of um, eight liquid streams and one gas stream which is really an unusually high number of uh, cuts, but allows us to control uh, product quality more precisely. The entire unit is uh, uh, computer operated. Uh, we do have, of course, uh, real people running the, uh, the unit. Uh, basically, uh, three operators per shift uh, that work uh, and the unit runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week throughout the year, except for uh, maintenance turnarounds, which uh, take place approximately every two years. We're inside the uh, control room of the, uh, the crude unit, and uh, uh, while I'd like to say this is a typical control room, uh, it actually is uh, considerably upgraded. We've recently installed all new uh, computer facilities uh, to assist in monitoring uh, the various uh, processes that take place uh, in, the, um, in the crude unit. Uh, this has enabled us to uh, improve the quality of the products and have closer control over, uh, over the entire process. Yeah, 
you know, we're uh, looking now at what we call the four bay, and uh, I guess we're not very original. It's a four bay because we have four loading bays, one, two, three, and four as they're numbered. Uh, this is the main loading rack for the refinery. Uh, we do have a number of others for various uh, specialty products, but here we, uh, we load many of uh, what we call the Kensol distillates. Uh, most of them are loaded at this rack. Uh, also our finished medium neutral base oil uh, and uh, some other bright, bright stock and sea stock are loaded at this rack. We're now in uh, the environmental uh, wastewater treatment plant part of our uh, facility. Um, as a refinery we take uh, considerable uh, care and attention uh, to uh, any discharges from the refinery. Uh, and uh, all of our wastewater has to be treated before uh, we're allowed to discharge it. Uh, it does get discharged to Tuna Creek and that discharge is always uh, monitored. Uh, we have biological treatment systems here uh, along with uh, sand filtration, air flotation, and um, uh, chemical addition all to, uh, to treat the, uh, the effluent uh, water uh, so that uh, it's perfectly acceptable uh, for discharge to the uh, to the stream. Uh, we are of course under the jurisdiction of the local DEP, the uh, Department of Environmental Protection, and uh, we adhere uh, strictly to all of the uh, requirements uh, for, uh, for discharge. We're inside <coughs> the uh, platformer uh, section control room and uh, here too you can see that um, we've upgraded all of the controls to a, a new computerized system. Our objective is to uh, uh, replicate uh, these uh, computerized systems throughout the refinery. So far we have uh, two major units uh, done, both the, the crew unit and uh, here at the platformer. Um, uh, we anticipate upgrading the instrumentation in the other units uh, probably next year. And uh, through these screens we're able to monitor uh, all areas of the, uh, the platformer uh, unit, uh, the platformer, the ISOM unit, the unifying section, uh, the naphtha fractionator, and they are all, uh, all monitored on various screens uh, here so that we can uh, uh, monitor the process and, and control the process uh, uh, from here. That doesn't mean that we don't have to go outside and turn some valves and do some things uh, manually. Wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but certainly everything is recorded here and is visible so that we know uh, what we have to do and when we have to do it. We are here in the uh, MEK control room and this is where uh, this entire operation is uh, monitored. Uh, all aspects of it, solvent ratios, temperatures uh, uh, are all controlled and monitored here um, uh, in this unit. It's a three-man unit. It's operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, virtually 365 days a year, uh, <clears throat> as is uh, most of the other units within, uh, uh, within the refinery.